Hello students, in this video from the chapter metals and non-metals, we will study about the noble metals and then uses of metals, non-metals and alloys. First, we have to study with the for the noble metals. Noble metals, as we have studied in the reactivity series, the last two elements in the reactivity series are gold and platinum. So, gold and platinum, since they lie uh, in the end of the reactivity series that means at the bottommost part of the reactivity series so they are very least reactive and that is why they are called noble metals they are since they are least reactive so that means they are chemically unaffected by all the chemicals whether it is air water acids bases and any other chemical or any other substance due to this they do not get tarnished that means they uh, do not lose their luster and they remain shiny for a longer period of time and one more thing that which is apart from all these properties that they are highly malleable as compared to other metals they are highly malleable and ductile due to all these reasons they are called noble metals and that is why they are used in making jewelry we talk about the pure gold then pure gold undoubtedly it is a noble metal least reactive and chemically unaffected by any other uh, chemical and also highly malleable and ductile but still this pure gold it is not fit for making jewelry as this pure gold it is soft so we cannot use it to make jewelry to make it a little hard appropriately for jewelry the copper and silver they are mixed with the gold pure gold to make it a little hard and so that it can be used for making jewelry so purity of the gold it is measured you must have heard this before also at your home from your parents that the purity of the gold it is measured in the carat 24 carat gold is considered to be 100 percent pure gold that means to check the purity of the gold we have to divide the gold into 24 parts like if we are talking about 18 carats of gold then 18 car in 18 carat of gold uh, it contains 18 parts of pure gold out of 24 total 24 and the remaining six parts they are of the impurities which we have added in the form of copper and silver to make it a little hard and uh, fit for making jewelry to find out the percentage of the pure gold in 18 carat gold we have to divide 18 by 24 and to find out the percentage percentage we have to obviously multiply by 100 so the percentage of the gold we will find it out as 75 percent so in fractions it will come out to be 3 fourth of the total gold so that means in 18 carat of gold we have only three fourth of the pure gold that means only 75 percent of the pure gold remaining 25 percent is copper or silver or in other words remaining one fourth will be either copper or silver so here are some uses of some common metals like the gold silver and platinum which lie in the bottommost part of the reactivity series they are used in making jewelry this everybody knows gold it is also used for electroplating the cheaper metals to make it appear like gold platinum it is used in dentistry as well as in making the scientific instruments iron which is a very widely used metal it is used in making many things around us you can find it in the cooking vessels water boilers stoves toys tools agricultural implements chains nails bolts as well as electromagnet aluminium since it is very light metal so that is why it is used in making aircraft bodies as well as uh, in the form of cookers we use it in the cooking vessels and as thin foils in the kitchen we use often use it for packaging the food as well as for packaging of medicines copper 
it is widely used in making electrical wires or cables and also uh, we use the use it in the cooking vessels silver it is used we have already discussed it is used in making jewelry as well as thin foil of the silver it is used for decorating sweets silver and gold they are very expensive metals and they have very they are also very good conductors of electricity but since they are very expensive so we cannot use it for making electrical cables and that is why they are used only in making electrical cables where only high precision is required so they are used only in high precision electrical contacts in computers these are all the uses of some common metals let's talk about now uses of non metals some common non metals nitrogen it is used in making fertilizers as we know that the fertilizers they have to be rich in nitrogen as well as in phosphorus because the plants they require these two main nutrients for their growth so next is a phosphorus phosphorus it is used in making matchbox industry the tip of the matchbox or the matches the tip which is black in color that is made with the phosphorus and it is also we have discussed it is also used in fertilizers iodine it is a very good antiseptic so it is used in making antiseptic lotions and creams sulfur it is used in making firecrackers gunpowder and sulfuric acid which is used in the lab oxygen we all know that it is quite essential for all the living organisms diamond which is a form of carbon only it is used in making jewelry in cutting glasses because this is a hardest substance known and also for the same reason it is used for grinding tools graphite which is again a form of carbon and it is also a good conductor of electricity so it is used in making batteries as well as in pencils because it leaves a dark mark or a black mark on the paper so graphite it is used in making pencils as well as uh, uh, batteries now let us talk about the last topic that is alloys alloys these are the first thing we have to understand that these are mixtures and which type of mixtures they are homogeneous mixtures of two or more metals or a metal and a non metal so to prepare an alloy we have to homogeneously take the mixture of either two or more metals or a metal with a non metal these alloys they are made only to make or to improve the properties of the pure metals how it is different from the pure metals and how it is better than the pure metals the advantages of preparing alloys are that they are stronger harder and resistant to corrosion as compared to pure metals so that is why we prepare alloys to advan which is an advantage over the pure metals these are few common alloys their constituents and their uses the first one is steel steel it is made from iron and carbon it is used as a construction material as well as in making machine parts the second one is stainless steel which is different from the steel it is made up of not iron and carbon it is made up of iron with chromium and nickel it is used in the kitchen for making cooking utensils and cutlery and surgical implements brass this is the third alloy which which is made up of copper and zinc it is used as a cooking utensil and it is also used for making decorative statues nuts and bowls bronze is the next alloy which is a homogeneous mixture of copper and tin which is used for making cooking utensils coins medals and statues the next one is german silver which is a homogeneous mixture of copper zinc and nickel which is used in making tableware duralumin it's a very important alloy because it is a homogeneous mixture of aluminum copper 
magnesium and manganese so there are four metals which are added or which are mixed to prepare duralumin it is used for making being so light and corrosion resistant and very strong and very hard it is used for making aircraft bodies automobile parts and undersea vessels alnico which is very commonly used by us it is made up of as you can see in the spelling of alnico only al stands for aluminium ni stands for nickel and co stands for cobalt so it becomes alnico which is the magnet which we uh, with which we generally play so alnico is a used as a magnet the last one is the gun metal the gun metal it is a mixture of copper tin and zinc it is used to make gun barrels so this is all about the uses of alloys so hope you have enjoyed the video and you have understood the uses of metals non metals alloys as well as noble metals thank you for watching students